making sure everything's everything's out. good yeah. welcome everybody to why are you an entrepreneur the trials and triumphs i'm maureen edwards the founder of eight simple steps and for those of you tuning in the way you do every single week welcome back and you know the drill this is where i bring you rock star entrepreneurs to have rock star conversations all about entrepreneurship and for those of you maybe watching the replay and been here for the first time Welcome, and I think you're going to pick up some really amazing tips, best practices, words of wisdom, and advice, and tonight's no exception. I have Gary Heltz, who is a CPA and a CTC, and he is the founder and president of, let me get it right, Small Business Advisors. Advisors. <laughs> Welcome, Gary. How are you? Great. How are you doing, Maureen? I am good. And I am so glad that we were able to kind of reconnect because I know you had me on your amazing podcast because yeah. for people out there, not only is Gary an amazing entrepreneur, but you're also a podcast host, you're an author, um, and you really dive deep into helping business owners. So I was on your show and I thought, well, wait a minute, why doesn't he just come on mine? Like, right? That right, makes sense. Right, right. So I'm really glad that you're here. And uh, for those of you out there, Gary has a few decades of experience in entrepreneurship. So of course, my first question always has to be, why are you even doing this? Because we all know entrepreneurship is hard and you got a couple decades out there. So yeah, yeah. What's the deal? So I mean, you know, kind of give you give you the, the way back story. Um, you know, I when I was a kid, I watched The Untouchables. If anybody remembers that movie. Um, and what I found fascinating was how, you know, the FBI uh, um, finally got Al Capone and it was through income tax evasion. They tried everything else and they had their forensic accountants do the research. So that fascinated me. So I'm like, OK, well, I kind of like to do that, that type of thing. Um, when I was in high school, one of my football coaches was a bookkeeping, uh, was teaching bookkeeping. So I took the class from him. And to me, it was like the matrix. I just, I saw it. I understood it. I picked it up. It just, to me, is what my calling was. Um, so I went on, to, when I went on to college, I got my accounting degree, um, graduated college at that point. Um, you know, the uh, FBI had a hiring freeze you know, going on. So, you know, I pursued uh, working for, you know, uh, um, an accounting uh, firm, worked for them for a while, did some for-profit, non-profit, gained a lot of experience and decided, okay, I'm going to go out there and hang my own shingle um, and, and, and do this. Um, part of it was, you know, when I was in high school, my mom had an issue with her taxes and had to have a professional helper. Um, and this was back in the um, in the 80s. And they charged her 600 bucks to do her tax return. Now, my mom was, right. was a, a school teacher raising three three kids on her own. So it wasn't like she had, you know, some big massive business or anything else. And I just I thought that that was wrong. I thought it was I thought she, I felt like she was taken advantage of. So one of the things that I've done over the years um, with our business is you know, we try to make sure that, that our fees are reasonable for anybody. Uh, we work with a lot of business owners, hence the name Small Business Advisors. Um, and we really try to help people write their tax future. Um, and what I mean by that is, is that I feel that you and I can do a lot better job spending our tax dollars than the government can. Um, you know, so what I try to do is really help people grow their business. And as they're growing their business, what is their why? What is their purpose? Why why are they in business? And then try to help them get there. But I do that by helping them save um, a lot of their hard earned money because it's not how much you know that top line is, it's the bottom line. How much do I yeah. get back in my own pocket? So we really try to draw on that. And I, I just, I love helping people. Um, that's, I do a lot of volunteer work. I co-founded a charity. Um, I'm the president of the local chamber of commerce. So there's a lot of the, the, the volunteering and things that I do just, just to help people. So 
you know, not not that we get our services away for free, but you know, right. we, we do really try to help people. Um, and and it, as we bring people uh, new clients on for businesses, we've been able for for most of them, we've been able to average about a forty percent. Uh, tax savings for them um, if they actually let us put together a tax plan for them. That is awesome. So I, my big question is, what made you decide to even take the leap to go out on your own? Because most people would feel very comfortable with a corporate position. It's, you know, reliable paycheck. What did you yeah. just wake up one day and have an aha moment and say, I'm going to open my own business? Well, I, I worked for a very large distributor before I started my own business. Um, and worked very hard, very long hours, everything else. Um, but the salespeople were the ones that were making all the money. When it came time for bonuses and everything else, they were the ones that were getting the big fat bonuses, not me. And I was kind of like, well, wait a minute. I'm working just as many hours, if not more hours than they are, and I'm not getting rewarded for it. So that's kind of when I just said, you know, the uh, only way I feel like I'm going to be able to um, succeed is to do this on my own. Um, so you did it when I did it. And I think a lot of people feel that way that, you know, you're either going to work to build somebody else's dream and somebody else's wealth, or you're going to become an entrepreneur and build your own. You know, yeah. it's yeah. the way it is. And, and it, I mean, you and you know this, um, and I'm sure that, that, that a lot of people that are that are listening to this know this that they're entrepreneurs, and you know there is a risk that we're taking because, like mm -hmm. you said, I mean, it is. It's real easy to kind of sit back and and kind of um, collect that paycheck, if you want to want to call it. Um, but you know, I felt like I wanted to make a difference, and I think most entrepreneurs are looking at it that they want to make a difference and that's that's why we do what we do judy just sent in um hey judy how are you congratulations on your choice gary um judy hoberman is a uh, is a renowned women's leadership coach and i believe maybe i even connected you with her actually that i'm thinking uh you uh, with her with Adrian. So thanks, Judy, for being here tonight. Yep. Um, so what was the hardest thing about becoming an entrepreneur? Now, I know it's been a couple decades, but can you remember the pain? Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, on, honestly, um, you know, I'm a CPA. I'm a numbers guy. I'm not a marketer. Um, yeah. And that was one of the biggest things that that understanding the difference between branding versus marketing um, and understanding that um, you know, even though, you know, I've been doing business for a while, I needed to build my team, my team of professionals that I trusted, um, to help me be able to move my business forward. Um, but then also to be able to give me honest feedback. Um, and I think that that's something that a lot of entrepreneurs don't do. They don't have their board of advisors and, mm -hmm or trusted professionals, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, and you really need to do that because if not, you know, because the idea is, is that we're not going to own a job. We're going to own a business. And that takes a long time to get to that point because how many of us can actually walk away from our business for, let's say, a month and come back and it still be there? Um, yes, I understand when you first start out and things like that, that doesn't happen. But um eventually that's where we want to where we want to get to um so it was it was it was definitely you know definitely scary and and sometimes just getting out of your own darn way you know you said some really important things here because i i think that staying in your lane is what you kind of knew what you were really good at and i think sometimes yeah. we we want to be all over the highway and mm -hmm. do a little here, a little bit there, but you you recognize to stay in your lane and bring in some people that maybe knew more than you did in different areas. And I, I think I think a lot of people avoid doing that. And I, I'd like to know what your your thoughts are about that. Do you why do you think people don't do that and just take it all on themselves? But I think some of it is is that they're afraid, um, and what they're afraid of is is that especially somebody who's maybe been in business for five, 10, 15 years. They, they they are like, oh, well, I've already succeeded with all of this. It's like, well, maybe, 
but could it have been much better? Can you be mm -hmm. further along than you are? So they're afraid to ask the questions because, oh, I'm already a business. I, I shouldn't be asking these questions. I should have already known all of this. Um, mm -hmm. and I think it's one of those things that, you know, you got to pick the right, again, you got to pick the right team, um, people that are going to communicate with you in your language, not in their, their language per se, because lots of times people, and I, I'm going to tell you, I feel that most CPAs are egotistical as hell and they try to talk over everybody's head. And I think <laughs> that, that that is one of the things, if you have a professional that you're working with in, in any field, if they're not talking where you understand it, you need to get rid of them and get somebody else that is going to be able to talk to you so you understand more. And you and I talked about, you know, different marketing and, and, and branding and other things like that. And you made it where I could understand it, where before when I talked to people, I like, OK, I have no clue what they're going to say. So I'm just going to kind of sit over here and be quiet. Um, and but but I'm not learning anything at that point. Right. Right. So I think that you know, finding the right professionals to work with that are going to help you um, and not having yes people. There's so many times people hire somebody that is like them. Hmm. And I think that I I don't think that's the right thing. Um, and, and I feel that way because I want somebody that not necessarily is going to fight me the whole way, but that's going to push back and make me think about things to make me a better boss, a better leader, um, because I think we get too stuck in our way sometimes. I think we get into a comfort zone and yep. we don't want to be pushed out of it. And I, I think we, we avoid, sometimes people avoid those type of people that could be pushing them out of their comfort zone. And and I like the fact that you're saying, you know, keep an open mind and, and not do that. Um, so what do you think was the biggest mistake you felt like you made when you started uh, your own business? <laughs> just one. Um, I just want one. <laughs> not not shutting up and listening. I mean, honestly, I think that so many, again, take it, taking the CPA guy here, so many CPAs, um, when they meet with a client, they don't shut up and listen. They don't listen to what the client is saying that they want or they need. They're just so quick into, oh, this is what you need here. Do this, do that. Well, that's not what the client's asking for. Um, you know, and, and I, in it was finally, there was an older gentleman that, that um, it was probably my second year in business and he, after that kind of became one of my advisors um and literally we were talking he retired three or four different times from big corporate jobs and military and everything else and he came in to sit, sit down with me because he was looking for a new cpa because his had passed away um and he started and i was like trying to show him how smart i was and everything else and he just he just said shut up. <laughs> it was like I was like what? And he goes, you need to listen because you're telling me all these things that you can do, which is great, but that's not what I'm asking you. Hmm. So it was really one of those things where I really learned. It's like okay, I'm gonna you know ask a question, sit back, let you know the client or prospective client actually talk to me and actually listen to what they're saying and find out what's, what is what is really um, that they're trying to accomplish and make sure that we build that relationship um, and not have it as transactional. That is like some of the best advice, Gary, that I've heard where he did you the biggest favor ever. And, yep. and it was probably not easy for him and it wasn't easy for you to hear it, but it was the best thing he ever did. Because at the end of the day, I think we get so excited about our product, about our service. We're so passionate about it that sometimes we do lose the, wait a minute, I need to ask more questions to make sure I'm even on the right path. Right. And I think that was, that's fabulous advice because people need to take a step back and say, you know what? Let me find out if I even have what they need, because the, you might not. Yeah. Right. I, I think lots of times, especially I'm going to say us type A people, um, you know, tend to 
we're fixers. We want to, you know, we have a problem. We got to fix it next type thing. And I think that, that we really need to slow down and sometimes just, just be quiet and listen to see what is going on. Then that way we can kind of then formulate a plan to actually help. And Judy put this up. Sometimes we ask a question and the other person responds with something that has nothing to do with the question. Showing their brilliance when it wasn't the right time. Yep. Yeah, that is, it's fabulous, fabulous advice. So you've had quite a bit of success. And I want to talk about one of the biggest successes you've had in your career. Because I know you're doing a lot of things. But is there mm -hmm. something that really stands out in entrepreneurship that you've done that you have said, you know what, this is really special. I really accomplished something here. I, I think that there's you know, a bunch of things, um, you know, one, you know, that my first year in business, um, co-founding a charity, um, that, that we raise money for, uh, local families that have child with a serious illness. Um, so what we've done is, you know, we started out with about 40 of our best friends, um, playing in a golf tournament. And now, you know, we just finished our 24th year. Um, and you know, we, we raised a little over $30,000 to give to a family, um, wow. and, you know, it's, it, it means a lot that we're able to do this. Um, the, from the, the, the business side of things, um, probably one of the things that I'm uh, you know, very grateful for, um, uh, but proud of is in, um, Say it was, or it was either my first or second year in business. Um, I had, you know, these three ladies come in my office. Um, come to find out later on, one of them I actually knew her family. Never knew her, but knew her family. Played softball with her dad and everything else. Well, the three of them had a um, an event producing company, you know, that they had um, and they did this and they were every year they've been in business for a few years every year they were showing losses started working with them and helping them understand about putting budgets together and forecast and making sure that you worked on controlling your your expenses and and really learning how to really tighten um tighten down their cost and things like that so they could show more profit to be able to you know buy the assets that they needed to help them grow and also to be able to um have money for themselves um and over the years in 2018 they sold that business for 14.8 million dollars no way they did and wow. they are three awesome ladies um and it's just you know that that's one of those ones where um i worked with them for a long time and and when they sold the business it was like to me it was only i was very very proud of them for what they've done over the years and where they went to because all of it's on them i just i helped guide a little bit but it's all on them and the things that they did but then it was kind of like, you know, OK, I lost a kid now because this was something that we did yeah. know, basically weekly and stuff like that. So um, I think that that was one that, that you know, of all my stories, I think that's one. I mean, I think there's many successes throughout the time that that I have just I've helped guide the, the clients. I mean, and it's it's really them. That's a great success. And I, I think we've always said, you know, when we're advising, you know, small business owners or even big business owners, you always need a banker. You always need a lawyer. You need an insurance person and you absolutely need an accountant. Yep. How many business owners do you see out there that don't do any of them? There, there, there's a huge majority that, that don't, um, you know, I have run in, I, I was just dealing with a gentleman the other day that's that's in Florida um, that's been operating as a sole proprietor for years. And it's definitely not the right entity structure for what he's doing. Um, and I 
tried to put him in contact with an attorney to get the business set up properly in Florida. Um, and he went and did it himself. And now he's caused all kinds of trouble, you know, mm -hmm. with with Florida. Um, and now they're telling him that because of how he filed and stuff like that, because it wasn't proper, that he's got to wait until next year before he can try to apply again. So, wow. And, you know, and it's it's just one of those things, not trying to do everything on, on your own because you think you're going to save a buck. I'm telling you, I'm going to say 95% of the time it ends up costing you more in the long run. Oh, uh, I think it's like 99%. I think yeah. you're, you're a little bit uh, generous there on that estimate. No, I, no matter what it is, it could be, you know, finance, it could be marketing, it could be leadership, it could be so many things because entrepreneurship, let's face it, there are just so many moving parts to it. There is just right. no way that we can know everything. Um, well, talking about everything, let's talk about marketing for a minute, because okay. here you have a company that's well established in the community. And I'm just curious for those people out there who are trying to look at marketing their business. Have you found certain ways that have really worked uh, for you in growing your business and, and being able to reach that ideal client and being able to serve them? You know, they become, you know, part of your family. What are your marketing uh, tactics that you're using out there? A, a lot of it is, is contact. I mean, you know, um, you know, I have different, uh, you know, drip campaigns and stuff like that that we do with our existing business, our existing clients, um, but then also with potential clients, um, you know, again, you know, doing the podcast, um, you know, and part of that, I did that because I was forcing myself out of my box, you know, because I wasn't, and I still don't think I'm a, a big public speaker or anything else, but I just, that was, uh, I did not like doing that. Um, so I kind of forced myself into doing that, which now has let me feel more comfortable in doing seminars and things like that in front of groups. Um, so that, that's helping me, helping me personally evolve. Um, but it's also helping me because of some of the marketing things that we're doing, you know, based off of that. I think that, um and some things that i've learned from you too it's just like th it's always evolving so you have to mm -hmm. be prepared to keep changing along the way um because the same old ways don't keep working um you know before for a long time you know everybody said that the print was gone and you know doing direct mail was gone and all that stuff well honestly a lot of that is coming back because people are tired of being pinged through email and what's spam what's not spam and Lots of times people aren't opening it. So now you've got to sometimes go back to, I'm going to call it old school marketing, um, you know, to get the leads. Well, there's new again. Isn't that yep. what they say? It's like yep. we have the attention span of a gnat. So digital's out. Let's go back to mail. Right. right. It, it'll all right. come full circle. But I think what's important here is that we evolve with it. I mean, that's you jumped out of your comfort level again with a podcast. So think about how much opportunity it is to reach more people who right. may not have known you, but like to consume information like right. that. And, and I think that's where we have to just be open minded. And, and I say to people, we have to show up. It's not about us. I have people who hate being yeah. on video because they feel like they don't look good or they don't sound good. And I said, but wait a minute, that's vanity. Are you really interested in showing up for your customer? That's that's the way we should think. And and you said, I'm going to jump out of my comfort zone so I can show up for the people who need me. Which leads me to who is your ideal client? Because we all have one. It's like our avatar. We, we see it in our, our head. Like who would be the ideal person that is perfect for you and you're perfect for them? Right. Um, you know, business owners are, are the, the big ones. I mean, yes, we can still help, you know, everybody who's just got the W-2 and everything else with, with the tax preparation side of things. But the, the tax planning side is the piece that, that we're really able to, to help people with. And like I said, um, you know, we, we try to help people write their tax future. Um, and, and we do that with the business owner because there's there's couple thousand uh, tax strategies that a business owner can mm -hmm. use. A lot of them they don't know about. A lot of their um, their existing CPAs, 
you know, may have heard about them, but they don't deal with them. And many CPAs are very transactional. Or again, we're trying to build a relationship with people. Um, so, you know, a, a business owner, um, I'm going to say anywhere from, you know, grandpa in his, in his garage with his stained glass uh, business to, you know, the multimillion dollar um, government contractor. Um, kind of anywhere, you know, kind of in there. I think that um, you know, once you get to where you have probably more than 20 employees, I think you probably need to have somebody more internal um, controller type. Um, and then we can still help. But, you know, we're going to be more on the outside, you know, big picture side of things. Now, can you do people's taxes throughout the whole country or are you, yes. you're situated in Maryland, but you are yeah. able to. Yeah, we do. Okay. We probably, Right now we probably do taxes in probably 32 states. Okay. At this point. All right. And you have to remind me because I just was asked for an accountant from one of my clients and I told her I have one, but I think you would actually be better for her and her company. Mm -hmm. So expect a phone call gary this is this is how this all works yes right? it does yes it does and <laughs> so, I, I think it's one of those things that 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 i think forms like this podcast um i think chambers and things like that this is where you really get to know people yeah and talking with them and then you find it's like okay i i i like the way that you work i like the things that you have to say so now I'm going to start flocking together with you. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's how people, you know, in in business back and forth with people, that's how how it really works. And I think it's, you know, finding people that you're comfortable with. I It's a community. That's really what you're doing is you're building kind of an inner circle, an inner community. And you also support each other, too. I mean, people right. are not islands like that. You can't be a business owner today and think you're it's all on you. Don't do that to yourself. There are people out here who who can band together. So you're gonna you're gonna, you're gonna go to an early grave if you do. Yeah, this it's not gonna be pretty. It's not gonna work for you. So right. So what would be like the the one like quote that you really like out there that you you kind of live by? Is there a certain one that you could say um, see, share I, with people? I, yeah, I mean, I always say that, you know, that that I treat people like I want my mom to be treated. Um, and it's just, you know, one of those things that, that the passion in it just to make sure that, you know, that they're comfortable. And, and no matter how frustrated you get, um, you know, it's like sometimes you got to take a step back and just understand that that they're frustrated. They're upset because they don't understand. So sometimes you need to be a little bit, a little bit more patient. Um, you know, we just, we always say for, for us that we're, you know, we're not just an accountant. Um, you know, we're more than that. That's awesome. So tell everybody out there um, where they can contact you. Um, I know I, I learned we live like 15 minutes away right. from each other. Like yes. who knew, right? All right, of a sudden right. I'm like at the Chamber of Commerce, and you're there. Right. I'm like, wait a minute. This is no way. So, um, so tell everybody, Gary, how people can reach out to you. Sure. So, um, you know, you can um, reach out to me through our website, um, www.sbadvisors.cc, Charlie Charlie. Um, you know, our phone number here is 410 721 6000. Name of my uh, podcast is Grow Your Business, Grow Your Wealth. Um, I think that, you know, every every Wednesday morning, um, you know, we have our, our podcast that's out there. A lot of great people I've had on. Maureen, you've been on and, and was awesome with us. Um, you can also find me on uh, on LinkedIn. Awesome. Facebook, you know, kind of all the socials. And I do want you to let everybody know you do have a book out there. Do I you do. want to let people know where they can get your book and what the title so is? Yep. So you can get get that get that on uh, on Amazon. Um, it's um, now now you just put me on the spot. Now I forget. Um, <laughs> it has something to do with wealth, from what I understand. Oh my God! I can't believe I'm drawing a blank on this. <laughs> That's okay. 
I can certainly uh, make sure that we follow up. But uh, the, um, the, the hardest right, question. The right, the right, yeah, exactly. The right team, the right plan. Awesome. That, that was the hardest question of the night. Yes, I mean, it was. Come on, Gary. Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've absolutely loved having you. And I told you the time would fly yes. just having this conversation. And I could ask you a million more things. Um, but I do want to say, are you willing to come back later oh, on? Definitely. Definitely. Great. Had great, great, great to have time. you. All right. Well, everybody, that's a wrap for us. Uh, I thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Please reach out to Gary for all of your accounting and business solution needs out there. He is ready and, and waiting to talk with you because it isn't, it isn't transactional. This is all about relationships. And if you need somebody in your business right now that needs to help you start converting some customers out there because you've been doing a lot of marketing and not getting any traction, please reach out to me, 8simplesteps.net. And we will see you next Thursday with another rock star entrepreneur. And for those of you who are entrepreneurs and you'd like to be a rock star on my show, please just reach out to me on any of my social channels that you're watching this on and let me know when I can get you booked. You have a story to share and I have people who need to hear it. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great night.